Hello and welcome to the YouTubers Union. It's been about a month now since I've uploaded the first video and we had some phenomenal success since then. And this is just a little update. <laughs> we have about 16,000 members now and I guess 10% of them are creators having a total of between 40 and 60 million subscribers and uh, being uh, on YouTube with about a total of 250,000 videos altogether. We have seen some major coverage by other YouTubers, bloggers, by online and print press, radio interviews and I even have some TV interviews coming up. So this was what happens when you mess with influencers. They have influence. Of course we still have the Facebook group and I invite everyone who isn't a member already to join us, which is really our news blog page. So this is not where we really discuss individual issues. And for individual discussions we have a forum, and the forum is also pretty active and well kept. I guess the biggest news is that we actually had a meeting with four people from YouTube, and uh, the top dog was the, actually the global head of monetization, so fairly high up. And it was a good discussion. Uh, we've been talking about all the points that we had for monetization. And uh, actually for the first time ever, YouTube admitted officially that there is hidden demonetization. So even videos that look completely green dollared and everything are probably demonetized, at least in part, so that a lot of advertisers will use an option to kick them out. And therefore that is the reason why we see a lot less income on anything that has something remotely to do with the socially uh, controversial content. But also it becomes really, really clear that YouTube thinks in departments. This means that the guys who are responsible for monetization have nothing to do with the partners. And they don't actually care much about partners and creators. They care for what they are measured against and that is how many advertisements they're bringing in. And, and that is a part of what we're seeing here is that, you know, you get kicked from all kinds of directions as a creator and uh, there are different people responsible for this at YouTube, but it's, it's not a common uh, entity. It feels for us like it is a common entity, but it isn't. These first discussions have been pretty good and they told me many times how valuable this is and what kind of good feedback that is, but we will see. They would have said this in any case, no matter what, I've, if I probably have said that I think we need a new Pope, they probably would have said this is good feedback too. So in any case, we will see what comes out of it. Uh, they invited me for further discussions and that is really great. Uh, so I, I will not accept any stalling and I will not accept any holo blah blah. I want to see action too. But for now I'm really happy that YouTube acknowledges us and that we have a say in the things that happen. Now what we also did is we had a survey, actually two surveys, one for users and one for creators because we are now so many that statistically what we do is highly relevant. Therefore. Um, I asked a few questions and the outcome has been very, very, very interesting because it proves that first of all the subscription notification system is completely broken or tampered with by YouTube and also that the entire trending recommended uh, thing is flawed because it, it is absolutely clear that monetization plays a role even though YouTube totally denies this. 48.8% of the users are unhappy with the upload notification system. 60% of the users report missing notifications, even for bell subscriptions. YouTube says this isn't happening. 44.2% of the users have been desubbed from channels. 75% of the creators have experienced demonetization. That's quite a number. 40% of the creators experience filtering, even for monetized videos. 71.2% of the creators think that people are being desubbed. The income of the creators is down on average and very significantly so. Now of course people can say that this is not representative because uh, you know, the YouTube union only has members that are unhappy with YouTube and that is true. This is a very very representative study for those who are unhappy with things at YouTube. Obviously uh, those are more than just a few. But it absolutely cannot be denied that something is wrong with the subscription notification system and also it is totally clear that this is not platform dependent. Because I asked people what platforms they are using and it is all over. It is on desktop, it is on iPhone and it is on Android. So there is, is so this is not a platform specific bug. And I have a suspicion that this actually has been tampered with by YouTube, which is a scandal because I think it's actually fraud 
because they're telling people if you click on this bell symbol then you will get a notification anytime this channel is uploading a video and it's not happening and and that is not right you know they don't give people what they want they give people what they think is valuable for their business and that is absolutely a no-no all right so a few questions that have been brought up to me that i'd like to address first of all when will we start with actual measures well, it's too early because right now YouTube is still talking to us. They are negotiating. It's an open discussion. And this is not the time to really do something against them. But of course, my patience isn't very, uh, very long lasting. If I see that they stall, uh, we will immediately kick into action. And that may be very soon. Then, of course, the next question is, what is a typical measure? You know, what can we do against YouTube? Well, we can, we can hit them where it hurts. I would simply ask the creators amongst us to stop uploading full videos to YouTube for a while, maybe two weeks or maybe three weeks, and instead uploading the content to any other platform. I don't care if it's Facebook or Vimeo or whatever, you know, whatever you, you like. And, and then only put teasers onto YouTube with a link to the real video, because that hits YouTube hard. What they hate the most is if people leave the platform. And this is exactly what people would do. They would leave the YouTube platform. And I think this would be a very cool measure. But it's too early yet. Then very often people say, well, then look for something else. Start an own website or go to Full30, go to Vimeo, whatever, go to Pornhub, by all means. Well, first of all, let me make it very clear. This is the YouTubers union. This is not the YouTube quitters union. This means we want to make YouTube a better platform. Uh, we want to go back to what used to be YouTube and we also want to enhance even the old version of YouTube. But what we don't want is we don't want to leave that platform behind because there's too much hard blood that we put into it. But also, where do you want to go to? What does it take for an alternative platform to really be serious competition for YouTube from the perspective of a creator who needs to make a living? Well, first of all, it needs to have an income system for the creators that is worth some, something. And uh, second, it needs to have good infrastructure. We need a good software platform that's reliable and relatively bug-free. We need a good recommendation trending system so new users will find our videos. And what we also definitely need is traffic. And that is one thing that most of the alternative platforms right now don't have. You know, things happen on YouTube. Things don't happen on Vimeo and they don't happen on Full30. And they, they probably happen at Pornhub, but not the kind of action that we like to see. Some of us. <laughs> if you look at the alternative platforms, Vimeo, well, Vimeo doesn't have a way for creators to earn money. Actually, it costs money to run a channel on Vimeo. So that is a no-no. Then Full30, which is right now only open to invited channels. This also has very little traffic, and we have some creators that tested it, uh, and are were very unhappy and actually left the platform again because of software issues, but also financial problems. Then we have Pornhub, which they certainly have the infrastructure. I mean, they're hosting a lot of videos already, so they could host just a few more. But then their business model is completely different. Pornhub makes money by playing small, dirty video clips, uh, actually trailers, something. And then that, that is uh, supposed to bring people over to subscribed uh, platforms, so they have to pay money for seeing the full version. That may work with hardcore pornography, but it's probably not working with uh, socially controversial content like gun videos, like news that also report about revolution and war and all these things. Therefore, I don't think that Pornhub is an alternative either. And then there is Daily Motion, and they are probably the most hopeful platform that we have out there, but they still lack traffic, massively lack traffic. And also there are some serious limitation on resolution of the video and on length and all these things. So, but, but that is an alternative that one day may actually rival YouTube. But right now, it's not the case. All right, then of course, we have a lot of questions about the recent shooting at the YouTube headquarters in San Bruno. Uh, first of all, let me say this is a terrible incident and I hope that the poor victims will recover swiftly and fully. Um, we actually condemn these actions Violence is not the way to go and it's not needed. We can do this together with YouTube, we can negotiate, we can make the platform better by dialogue, by talking to each other and not by killing each other. But it also shows how much anger and frustration YouTube's change of policy created. This was actually very brutal, harsh, unannounced 
and also uh, because of the lack of communication, it was also really making people angry. And this is what happens when you make thousands and thousands of people very angry. Some of them may have mental problems already and may snap because of this. And I believe this is what happened at San Bruno, uh, which still, of course, is not right. And it's, I'm not saying that it's YouTube's fault that that woman snapped. I stopped getting views. So this is because I'm being filtered. At this point in the investigation, it is believed that the suspect was upset with policies and practices of YouTube. This appears to be the motive of this, for this incident. We know that she was upset with YouTube and, and, and we, we've determined that right now that's the, the motivation that we've identified. This is just actually the result, also a result, of what they did to a lot of people. You know, YouTube gave a lot of people like some kind of taste how it is to be famous, popular and successful. And then they took it all away. So, you know, that's why I'm saying we need to have monetization being brought back to small channels. It's not the money, because these channels made almost no money before. It's just pocket money. It's not the cash. It's the hope that is the problem. You know, YouTube pulled the rug from underneath these people, and they, by taking away the hope that one day they may be successful and make a living from YouTube. And uh, now it's all over because the videos that are not monetized, obviously, because of the system is what it is, you know, are not listed in trending and are not listed in recommended as much. And therefore, it's almost hopeless. All these small channels saw a loss of views, not just a loss of monetization. They also saw that they're losing subscribers and views. And this actually is what torments people. Therefore, I'm saying bring this back. So that was my update for today. And I also would like to add a small call to action. Please share this. It is in the public domain. It's actually uh, Creative Commons. So everybody can take all of it or parts of it and spread it. Spread the word. Go on Facebook and bring people to our union because the more we are, the higher our chances are that we can change something. Remember, united we stand and united we will succeed. Thanks and bye-bye.